When we're talking about spiritual warfare, I remember a few times when my wife and I were pastoring in a small country church in a, a rural town, a farming town up north. And um, what we didn't realize was for a six state area, it was a center for Wiccan, witchcraft, black magic, uh, sacrificing animal. And for all we know, people, we weren't sure. But uh, this little church, it was way out in the country, and my wife and myself and our three children. Will, who's in his mid-30s now, he was maybe 12 years old at the time. And Josiah was, I think, six, and Nicole was four. And we, we learned very quickly how to do spiritual warfare. Uh, many times that um, in the middle of the night we were, we were attacked, you know, poltergeist type stuff. It didn't really scare us in the beginning. We didn't know how to fight it, but we knew that it couldn't harm us. And so we, uh, we learned. We learned very quickly. But one of the things that we learned was the difference between satanic attack and demonic attack. Demonic attack can be any number of uh, demonic forces. Uh, just the prince of power of the air over that area. Um, you know, the, the ranking system in the demonic realm. But when it's a satanic attack, you know who it is. It's Satan, Satan himself. And you know it because uh, it's something that you'll never forget. The only satanic attack that we ever had was in the middle of the night and I was sound asleep. And I remember Nicole calling out, help me daddy, help me, help me daddy. And, but I was asleep and so I heard her in the spirit calling out to me and her room was just right next to ours in the parsonage that we lived in and so as I got up the air was a, a sickening sweet smell it was dank that's the only word that I can use to de describe it it was dank and when I tried to get up, um, I felt a real resistance. The only way that I can describe it is, imagine, everybody knows what Cairo syrup is. It's a real thick, heavy syrup. Imagine the entire house full of Cairo syrup. Well, imagine trying to walk through something like that. It was extremely difficult and something that should have taken me maybe 20 seconds to get from one room to the other. It took me about five minutes. And so I made it into Nicole's room and it was just as dank and that, that sickening sweet smell was there too. And I prayed. I bound up the enemy and away it went. And the room was just peaceful and calm. And Nicole was still sleeping. She never woke up. And as I started to walk out of the room, as soon as I passed through her doorway, back into this thick, demonic, satanic, sweet, dank smell. And I was going to try to make it back into the bedroom to wake up my wife to tell her that we're under attack. And it was a kind of attack that I'd never sensed before. And we really didn't know how to handle this kind of attack. If you've handled a demonic attack, it's you know, there's a certain procedure that you go through. It's in the Word of God. But a demonic attack is different than a satanic attack. A satanic attack, the first time that it happens, it could catch you off guard, but it doesn't need to scare you. And I'm going to explain exactly how the Holy Spirit led us to deal with this. So as I walk back out the door, back into this satanic funk, Linda was making her way out the door. She was struggling against this, making her way out the door, and she had our Bibles in her hand, which that's what we always did whenever we had a, a demonic attack. The Wiccans would get together, and wherever they were at, and they would try to, you know, knock us off guard or whatever. We would just go out into the dining room, turn on the uh, overhead light, open up our Bibles, and just do warfare. And we won. Every time we won, it actually it got to the point to where, from what we heard, they couldn't even meet 
the Wiccans. They couldn't even meet because the, 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 the terror that would just meet them was just intense. And um, that's what we sent. We sent it back into their camp. We sent it back into their camp. And we did that through the word of God. And we beat them. And uh, we did it through the, the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. But this was just a little different. And we walked in toward the living room. Again, that should have only taken maybe 15, 20 seconds. But it took us a lot longer than that. Well, once we made it into the living room and we sat down, Josiah, he's maybe six years old, he comes around the corner. And he was struggling against this too. Of all three of our children, Josiah is the only one that ever woke up. And to this day, he's very keenly aware of what goes on in the spirit realm. So we sat down and Linda gave me my Bible and she took hers. And we were keenly aware because the Holy Spirit made sure that we knew. Don't say a word. Zip it. Zip the lip. And I looked at her. And she looked at me. And we didn't utter a sound. And then the Holy Spirit would lead me to a verse of scripture. And Josiah just sat down at our feet and just watched the whole thing. We opened up our Bibles and the Holy Spirit would lead me to a certain verse of scripture. I would read that scripture out of the Bible and then he would release me to bind up Satan. He'd say, bind him up now. And I would say something like, Satan, I bind you up in Jesus' name by virtue of the scripture that I just read and I have authority over you. And it just made it simple and sweet because the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me say anything else other than just simple and sweet. And then he'd say, zip it now. And then Linda would do the same thing when she was led to read a certain verse of scripture. She would do the same thing. And then the Holy Spirit would say, now, bind him up. And then zip it after she was done. He wouldn't let us speak any of our own words. And we were keenly aware that had we spoken our own words, we might have been in a little bit of trouble. Not any kind of trouble where we would have been killed or anything, but we would have had a fight on our hands. But the way it worked out, it was a satanic attack, but it really wasn't a fight. We simply read the word out of the book, out of the Bible. And then we bound him up, short and sweet, very simple. And it took us about 30 minutes of that, and the satanic it released the satanic grip released from the parsonage and it it left and it never came back they we have never been attacked like that since because we know how to handle it we know how to deal with that and i told you that story just to let you know how powerful it is when you read the word out of your bible out of your mouth out loud against Satan, against demonic forces, against the attack. And you will win. You will win every time. But don't pay attention to what's going on around you. Don't pay attention to any of the poltergeist type stuff that might be happening. Because sometimes it happened with us. Cold breezes would blow through the parsonage when all the windows were shut and the curtains were, were drawn. Doors would slam 10 or 15 times, just poltergeist type stuff. It didn't really scare us because we knew where it came from. But we ignored it. We commanded it to stop, and it did. We spoke the word of God, and it did. We took apart, through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, a complete Wiccan contingency in a town. They couldn't even meet. It's because... The word of God flowed out of our mouth. We believed it. He empowered the word when he gave it to us, and it worked. And if it worked in our life, it will work in your life.